Hi guys, it's Ariel from Seattle Coffee Gear, and today we are going to be making some Halloween drinks. Um, these would be good for, you know, making at a Halloween party, socially distance, of course. Um, so why don't we get started? Right now, I'm going to be making a salted white chocolate candy corn hot chocolate. You can also turn it into a mocha by adding some espresso shots. It's great hot, it's great iced. Um, I like to put it in a drink shaker, shake it so it gets all frothy and then pour it into a glass with ice. Super delicious. This is the white chocolate candy corn sauce that I made. Um, so into it, I put about a half cup of white chocolate, half a cup of candy corn, uh, three quarters of a cup of water, and a quarter of a cup of corn syrup. And the corn syrup kind of just helps everything emulsify, so you get kind of like a nice saucy texture. This is going to be the cup that I pour it in. And I'm just kind of winging it. Um, you don't need to be as precise with this, so. It's just to taste, so I'm just going to go maybe a little bit more right about to here. And here we have the Rocket Giotto Evoluzione R. So I'm just going to purge my steam wand really quick and then I'm going to make a hot chocolate. Um, so we're just gonna purge it. I just have some whole milk in a pitcher. Whole milk tends to be better for milk texturing. It's going to give you a more creamy, velvety texture, a little bit of natural sweetness. All right, here we go. And what you want is your, if you can kind of hear a little bit of a paper tearing sound, you're looking for a whirlpool of milk. And when you hear it deepen like this, that means it's ready. Um, if you've got younger kids, then obviously you're gonna want to take it off a little bit sooner, just as it starts to get a little bit too warm for your hand, you're gonna wanna pull it to get it to the appropriate kid's temperature. Um, just because it's actually going to continue to heat once you pull it off. Now this is important, you want, to steam, or you want to purge your steam wand after as well. Just to get rid of any milk that got sucked up into the steam wand when you turned it off. And I'm just grooming my milk a little so it's all kind of like the same nice consistency. You want it to look like wet glossy paint. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in give it a stir to get everything incorporated. And it's this really pretty sort of pastel orange color from the candy corn. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of room, about this much, because we're going to actually top it off with some whipped cream, which I have here. And by some, I mean like a mountain. Go big or go home, right? Just have some candy corn here. We're going to add a little bit of decoration to it. So just kind of dot it throughout the whipped cream mountain. And I'm going to drizzle a little bit of the sauce too, that way you can see some more of that bright orange color. And you just kind of swirl your spoon, let it drip like so. Uh, if it's for, for kids, then you can just leave it like this. Um, if it's for a grown up, I actually like adding a little bit more. So I have some black sea salt here that I'm just going to sprinkle over the top and it just really helps cut through the sweetness and it also provides like a nice contrast against the white and the orange 
of the rest of the beverage. So this is a salted white chocolate candy corn hot chocolate. Enjoy, guys. All right, and we're moving on to the next drink. All right, now we're on to our next drink. This is going to be an espresso mocktail. Um, I kind of, I'm calling it the witch work shaken espresso. Um, the name is actually, it was inspired by my favorite Neil Gaiman poem, poem called Witch Work. Um, the witch was as old as the mulberry tree and she lived in the house of a hundred clocks. It's probably one of my favorite poems. It's nice and Halloween-y and it's kind of sad. I like it quite a bit. Um, but it's going to have blackberries, rosemary, lemon juice, smoked syrup, and espresso. So we're gonna get started here. So I'm going to start with an empty drink shaker. Into it I'm just going to just kind of get some rosemary needles in here. You don't wanna to do too much or it'll taste woody. And then a few blackberries, maybe three or four, depending on how big they are. These are pretty big, so I'm just gonna do four. I'm just gonna take my muddler, and a muddler is really good for kind of opening up the oils. It's also going to release the juices in the blackberry. And you're just gonna go in there and kind of squish it a little bit. You don't wanna go too much, just enough to kind of open everything up. All right. And the espresso I'm using, it is Batdorf and Bronson's Sumatra, um, which is really nice. It's going to play well with some of the herbal smoky notes that we're going to have today. Sumatran coffees tend to be a little bit more savory, um, so I just figured it would play well off of the other ingredients. And you don't need to be as precise. Just get it dialed in and kind of eyeball it with the shot because we're going to be blending it with other ingredients so it doesn't have to be quite as refined as if you were drinking a straight shot. Okay, so we've just got like a little mound of espresso here. shot going. In the meanwhile, while this is going, I'm just going to put some ice into my drink shaker. And a few cubes into my glass. All right, so now I'm just going to put three ounces of espresso into my shaker, and then I'm going to add half an ounce of smoked syrup. I've used Monin's Hickory Smoke Syrup. Um, there's other brands that you can use, or if you wanted to make your own, you would do equal portions of water to like a smoked granulated sugar. And you can find those at specialty spice shops. So I'm just going to do a quarter of an ounce of that in there. And just to add a little bit of brightness to cut through the sweetness of the blackberries, um, we're going to add a quarter of an ounce of fresh lemon juice as well. Okay. Going to get a good seal on my drink shaker and we're going to shake it up so it gets well chilled. And I usually do 30 shakes um, and that's enough to get everything well incorporated and um, chilled. And I'm gonna double strain, so this is just a little cocktail strainer. Um, 
Because, you know, nobody wants blackberry seeds or rosemary needles in their teeth. So you just strain this over the ice and it's going to catch any bits that you don't want in there. Um, if you want that in there, that's totally fine too. Um, I'm one of those weird texture people, so I don't like chewing on my drink. And you get kind of like this nice deep brown color with a little bit of kind of purple in there from the blackberries. Let's finish that there. Okay, and I'm just going to garnish it very simply with a sprig of rosemary. And again, we wanna kind of wake it up, right? So you just kind of take the back of your hand and you just gently slap it. And that just kind of releases the oils. There we go. If you wanted to get fancy, you could take like a creme brulee torch to it or a match and light the rosemary just to kind of play off the smokiness from the syrup. All right, this is my witch work uh, shaken espresso mocktail. And now we're moving on to the next drink. And on to the next drink. This is going to be our last drink and we are getting extremely boozy with this one. So it's going to have absinthe and in this case, kava. Traditionally you would use champagne, but that's expensive and kava is just as good and costs a fraction of the price. It's a Spanish sparkling wine, tends to be dry, which is nice. Um, this is going to be my interpretation of Ernest Hemingway's Death in the Afternoon Cocktail, also known as the Hemingway Champagne. Um, he invented it after he visited France and drank four to five of them a day. Um, don't do that, you'll die. Uh, <laughs> So I'm calling this my undead in the afternoon cocktail. It's going to have an ounce of absinthe, some sparkling wine, and we're going to top it off with some shaken iced espresso. So this is absinthe right here. It's the French recipe. And it has this beautiful sort of herbal aroma. It's naturally green in color because it uses wormwood. And you only want to use an ounce of this because it has a very high alcohol content. And we're just going to drop this directly into the glass. Now, if you don't like anise or licorice, you're probably not gonna like this drink um, because absinthe is flavored with both anise and fennel, which have like a very strong licorice flavor. Now we are going, moment of truth, we're going to pop the cork here. I'm going to try not to get it everywhere. Again, you want to keep your thumb on the cork while you're loosening the wire basket and you never point it at someone just in case it decides to explode. So always hold it straight up to avoid injury. There we go. All right, now we're just gonna pop it open. Ready? One, two, three. And there's this really cool thing that happens when you mix other liquids in absinthe. It's called the ouzo effect or louching, where when you mix enough of it in, going to change color. So it becomes opalescent and almost milky. All right. So now we're going to get to the drink, the espresso part of it. I'm going to fill my shaker with ice. Get my espresso shot going.
while this guy is brewing, I am going to add to my shaker um, some homemade syrup that I made. So this is an allspice and lemon peel syrup. So I just made your basic simple syrup, um, one cup of water, one cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of allspice and um, some lemon peel in there. And you just kind of let it steep for a few minutes to infuse the flavors. And I am also going to add in about a quarter ounce of lemon juice to just kind of cut through everything and bring some clarity of flavor. Pour my espresso in. Give this a good shake until it's nice and frothy. Now we're just going to go ahead and top off what would normally be on its own. I just like it because it gives it kind of this witchy effect. You've got this green and then it mixes with the brown. It's almost like a witch's potion. I'm just gonna fill that up to there. And last, I'm just going to garnish it with a lemon peel. So you wanna take it skin side down. I'm gonna express the oils here. And that's gonna kind of help with the bubbling. Wipe it around the rim, and then we're gonna drop it in, like so. And that, my friends, is the undead in the afternoon. Thank you for joining me guys. I hope you have a great Halloween and you are definitely going to want to sit down after drinking this one. Uh, you're going to want to nap. Um, please drink responsibly. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a great Halloween. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, leave a comment below, and we'll see you next time. Cheers guys!